story that was actually more humiliating for me and it ended up to be really awesome. And then this one was actually a, a horror story. I'm signing autographs with Ian Sinclair at a convention and um, I have long hair. And so it was like, I'm signing things and all of a sudden I'm like, wow, there's like a weird, like assortment of BO like right here and I don't know what is happening and I was and Ian's like it's not me I was like it's not me either I mean I took a shower and uh he's like Jeremy that's so strange so I'm like writing and I went like this and there was like a like a whiff of it that went that way well when people are long story short people are taking pictures and they would like put their arm around me and I'm at the perfect height for like people's armpit. So my hair had like absorbed sweat. Cue the psycho music. I'm like, <laughs> and Ian thought it was the best thing ever. At the time, Ian looked like Jesus. Like, he like, had this long hair with this beard, and he's so tall that um, nobody could get his hair smelling B.O. no matter how many times I tried to pay people because he harassed me all weekend. Um, and the reason Ian got a haircut is because a homeless, uh, no, not a homeless person, a woman came, to, uh, came up to him and told him he looked like a homeless Jesus. And Ian was like, Ian was like it's time to get a haircut. Um, so, but yeah, that was my horror story. I was like, my hair smells like B.O. This is, this is too much. And once you're like at a convention, you start and you're like doing signings and panels and stuff, your schedule's pretty packed. So I had no time to take a shower until like that evening. So I just put my hair up in like a wad of like, I just don't want anything to do with it. It was horrible. And hair is very absorbent of smell. Yeah, I really wanted to because it was just, it was miserable experience. Yes, yes. How was you working on show later? Awesome, because that show, um, we, for certain shows Funimation gets, we kind of get a hint like this is going to be a big show and everybody wants to work on a big show because that means we get a free trip normally to go to a convention to promote it. And for Soul Eater, like when I worked on Peach Girl, which was the first show I ever worked on, I got to fly to Anime Boston, which was my first convention. And then, um, and I did, that was my first anime that I worked on and I get to go to a convention. I had no idea it was like a big show. So for Soul Eater, like they told us this is going to be a huge show. Normally, we never get to watch episodes of the show before we audition. Like, we just see a picture of the character, we have a couple lines, but we don't get to see any animation unless we research it before. And um, more and more, they're not telling us what the shows we're auditioning for are because people start posting online like, hey, I'm auditioning for this, especially since a lot of fans have been given the opportunity to audition. They like to say like, oh, I saw that so-and-so is working on such and such a show, and they release it, and then we get in trouble. Anyway, so they let us watch the animation, uh, and I loved it. I think it's beautiful. The colors are amazing. The characters are fantastic. The show is, like, really smart, really funny. And um, I just lucked out in that I feel my character, Patty, is the most hilarious in the show. I'm very biased. But I, that was also incredibly freeing because I would, like, go into the booth, and I knew... I can be as stupid as possible and as random as possible, and it's only going to be more well received by the directors. This is true, actually. Hello, Chris Kaysen. Do you want to say that? Please say with me. Chris Kaysen, everybody. Oh, fantastic. Drinks moxie. That's epic right there. Oh, don't do this to me. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! It looks like Dr. Pepper. I was going to take a huge swig no. because I have an epic. <laughs> I know. Do you see his face? Like, that, was the, that was the best acting I've ever seen. I, t I, t I told her this is like the Vegemite of New England. Yes. <laughs> 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 It's good. I like Moxie.
Ladies and gentlemen, please place your bottle of Oxygen Sweet Tea Tea It's the gentian. This is you have lots of information. Do you know this is like this is this is named so appropriately because it reminds me of uh this is so lame. I'm quoting the holiday when he was like tells Kate Winslet's character, he's like, You've got Moxie. Like when you drink this, you need it. This gives you Moxie. Yeah. It brings you to have the bravery. It does. I feel better now. <laughs> Moxie. The taste of it. <laughs> well, I don't want to, I'm going to drink the whole thing. I'm going to just to prove it. Now I want some. I can do it. Yeah, I drank the, my first one. I drank the whole thing, too. <laughs> I was like, I don't, want to be, I don't want to be rude in your land. And I drank it. <laughs> in the land of Maine. But I have an entire, how many do I have? Like I have a 12 pack. pack. Somebody gave you a 12 pack? Yes, they did. <laughs> Drinkmoxie.com. Can we investigate this later? The t-shirt's available. That's all I care about. Distinctively different. You know. Look at the man. He's like, he's not even drinking anything. He's just like... He's a scientist. He's like, we made this. <laughs> well, I don't want to... Uh, I just want to pop in and let you... <laughs> which I thought would be brilliant until I ran out of air nine times and I noticed the director had fallen on the floor laughing. I was giving a play-by-play. -play. I like the giraffe one. I do. I, the giraffe one is my other favorite. I, I live tweeted that with Micah the other night, which I'll probably do again this yes. weekend. Yes. Yes. That was horrifying and awesome because that was like my first like big villain to play and Todd was directing it and Todd was like, oh, this is a huge show. It's the first like 50 episode show I worked on. Um, I think I might be dying. Anyway. <laughs> and uh, that's Moxie. At least I'll die with Moxie. Um, It'll go on your gravestone. This is true. <laughs> she died with Moxie. Uh, but yeah, he tells me, he's like, she's like playfully sexy. And uh, I, I've lived my entire life avoiding being associated with that word, and my life has been great. And now I've been cast as this character, and I was mortified. And uh, I told I told Todd, I was like, oh, you've got the wrong girl. I'll go. You can cast someone else. He was like, no, 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 you're, you're going to be great, and you're going to do this. And I was like, no, I'm not. <laughs> uh, so I recorded that show. I'm sad we didn't get to do all the episodes, because it was so awesome getting to torment Todd. Because normally our characters are like all but married. Um, so yeah, it was a good time. Sorry, I'm trying to figure out how to do this. Oh, I'll take a picture first. That'll be better. <laughs> Moxie, drink of champions. <laughs> and death. Thank you, Vlad. I'm gonna do an ellipsis and death. <laughs> Thank you. 
Yes, if you're not following me on Twitter, you can be part of this magicness. Uh, it's just at Jeremy Lee. It's really not exciting. Okay. Yes, sit, success. All right, yes. With the red sleeves. Um, give me a second. Oh, okay. absolutely. Can you do a Liechtenstein line, like how about saying she's not in love with her brother and people need to get their mind out of the gutter? Okay, Please. yeah. All right. Let me know when you're ready. It's ready. Are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> My brother and I have a very special relationship. People don't understand. I just love him and I want to make him pajamas with ribbons on them. That is all. He's magical. <laughs> Okay, second one, yeah. Um, are you doing autographs after? Uh, she's doing them tomorrow. Tomorrow. Uh, and then Sunday, I think. Yes, I'm doing them. I'm doing them on a t tomorrow from one to two, and if they'll let me on Sunday, I'll try to add an autograph session. Oh, cool. Yeah, if you're not watching Soul Eater on Tsunami and you have Tsunami, you oh, should be watching. Right after it started showing on Tsunami, right after it started showing on Tsunami, right after I finished it. Oh, oh like, are you serious? I had to stay Yeah, right. there's a new show coming out. If you guys haven't heard of Sword Art Online, that's going to be. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah! That's going to be airing on Tsunami also in August. And I'll be playing Asuna. Bryce Papenberg will be playing Katie Doe. So we're married, which is weird. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> my fiance met him, and I met his wife, and somebody else is like, wait, you're bu Aw, man. <laughs> I was like, what does that even mean? Anyway, so yeah, yes. Um, how is it like working on Holic? And I also have another question, it's kind of a two-parter. Um, if you had to make a band of voice actors, who would you pick and what would they do? Look, do they, like a band, like, like we're going to travel? Band. Oh, okay, I was like, I didn't know if it was like a band of like oh, hobbits going on a quest. <laughs> <laughs> or, um, and... That would be a good Because if I was going to pick a band of hobbits, it's going to be all the small ones. <laughs> so, I'll do both. Um, but, uh, band... Oh, sorry, first question. First question first, which was... Holly. Okay, I love your wings, by the way. I got distracted halfway through the Holly question. Uh, Holly, uh, I had just started at Funimation, so I they called me in to do a paid audition, and I started reading for Himawari, and I didn't hear back. So I was like, well, I guess I'm not casting the show. This is unfortunate, because that character is awesome. And every time I played that character, I wanted to go eat curly fries, because her hair looks like curly fries. Um, <laughs> But I ended up working on the Holic movie, which is what I did first, and I went back in again and did Walla and did like some bit parts, and I was like, man, I guess I'm not in it. And I wanted to look at the cast list to see like who was, who got cast as Himawari, so I could kill them. No, I'm not <laughs> I would never do that. Um, so I like looked, and I couldn't, I couldn't, they were like scrolling through the list so fast that I couldn't see it. And, um, so I was like, worked up enough courage to be like, so who's playing Himawari? And Colleen Clankenbeard goes, you. Did you forget the whole session? I was like, no, it, I didn't, it was a paid audition, so I didn't know if I was gonna get to like, come back and like, do it again, or like, be better, I don't know. She was like, no, you're, you're casting, you're working with a, with a newer actor named Todd Habercorn. I was like, what's a Habercorn? <laughs> So, yeah, but that was very cool. And I, I would get frustrated with her sometimes because I'm like, she's like a mean girl that doesn't know it. Because these boys are like, does she love me? She loves me. And sometimes she's very flirtatious, and sometimes she's like very, I don't care about you. Yeah. So, I don't, I don't know. But they said in season two, she gets pretty awesome and intense. So I'm hoping we get to do it. No, because I don't want to watch it and then find out that we don't get to dub it. And then I'm like, oh, the joy of getting to play this character. And then I don't get to. And then I'm just sad and depressed. You will be very, 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 very happy with that. That's what everybody tells me. So I'm hoping we get to do it. Yeah. I say it anymore and I'm going to be a jerk. <laughs> well, I'll say it for you. Very, very. I'll be very, very happy. That'd be great. Um, okay, so a band, who would be in my band? Um, 
Well, I would put uh, Todd Haverborn and Big Manana in my band because who wouldn't? Like, we would be assured to sell out. So if I, if I unite them together, then it's joy for every anime fan. And while I'm at it, let's put uh, Travis Willingham in it as well. Yeah. And um, who else would I put in my band? Johnny Young Bosch. Oh, yeah, this is intense. Oh, Johnny Young Bosch, yeah, for sure. Do I who? Who, what, what, what name? I'm oh, sorry, I didn't hear the name. Who is it? Um, but yeah, yeah, Chris Abbott. Yeah, I'm gonna put all of the guys that all the girls have crushes on because, because boys don't necessarily, like, a guy isn't gonna be like, I'm gonna go see a concert of, like, the guys didn't buy tickets to the Spice Girls. So even though it would be more fun for me to have, like, a band of girls, nobody's gonna go see that except for maybe the girls, but the girls and the guys will go see the guys. That's why action movies sell out. And you get surrounded by a bunch of guys. And I'm surrounded by a bunch of guys with really great voices, like, you know. Okay. And Bryce. I'll put Bryce Papper and bring him there as well. Woo! So I'm just surrounding myself with brothers. Now, if I'm doing, like, a band of traveling hobbits, um, I will selfishly choose myself because I will be King Hobbit because I'm the smallest. Because in Hobbitland, your power is determined by your height. Not really, but that's what I want it to be because it's the only way I will be the most powerful. Yeah. Um, Bryce Pappenbrook is not very, very tall, so I will pick him as well. Micah Solazad will be in my band because he's hilarious. Ayu, his lovely lady friend. Um, Stephanie Shea. And uh, Laura Woodhull. And uh, I, think, I think Jade Saxon can, can make the height work. Yeah. <laughs> so that will be my band, primarily because we were all tiny and we can fit in very small places, and there will be no, uh, we'll all have very small, like, letter opener style sorts. <laughs> because we're so small. And it'll be a fantastic band, and we can use our, our cunning voice skill to make everyone think that we're children and go unsuspected through the villages. <laughs> so, yes. You're a band of thieves now. Yes, exactly. <laughs> we, have, we have no ring. We just steal the ring, and then we have to return it. So we've, yeah, so we've stolen it to create a quest for ourselves. So we become Smeagol, we become Tornado. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Um, I figured I'd ask because uh, I'm a big fan of fairy tale, uh -huh. and um, I heard that they're finally starting to release um, the next like season on DVD upcoming. Is that true? Yes, as far as I know. Yeah. I I don't I don't know, that, like we've recorded stuff like far in advance, and then sometimes we record stuff right before and. We're just not allowed to talk about things. So generally, I find out things are happening from the fans because I don't, I don't know. They don't tell us things. They probably don't tell us things because they know we can't keep secrets. <laughs> so if they told us anything, the whole world would know because we'd get excited. And Is that your you caffeine? Yeah, or Moxie, and I would spill all of my secrets. Um, Micah and I were at a convention not too long ago, and luckily no one heard us because we're sitting there in a panel room watching someone else's panel, <laughs> chatting with each other. The director of the show we're talking about that, is, that shall not be named is sitting right behind us. And we're like talking about it, all of a sudden like I noticed my chair is getting kicked, and I was like, what? And he was like, what are you doing? I was like, we're just talking. He was like, about the show you can't be talking about. I was like, oh. I was like, it's such a good show. He goes, I know, shut up. <laughs> so now he calls me Chair Kick Lee because he, I have like more nicknames than I know what to do with at Funimation. So, yeah, almost got in trouble there. Thank goodness. Yes, I just see a hand up in the sky. Hi. Yes. Oh, uh, could you do like a line from Sword Art Online? Just to give us like a sneak peek. Of yeah, sure. What it would sound like. Um, I gotta think of one thing that she says. This one's very hard because I don't do it very often, or like at all, really. Um, what does she say? Uh, Even if I die in the game, the monsters won't beat me. They won't win. So she's a little girly and a little sweeter. Yes. Sure, let me think of one of the ones that she says. Oh, sing the song? Sing the song, is that what you want me to do? Okay. 
<laughs> yeah, apparently. But by, by joining the band, I didn't specify that I was going to be the manager. <laughs> so I was going to be like, I'm going to be security and the bouncer. Like, get away from the men, please. Quit catching the merchandise. Yeah. <laughs> These are worth more than your life. Get away from all of them. Uh, all right, I'll sing one song. Lord Millennium is in search of you. Looking for the heart now, have you heard the news? Maybe you stole it from him, I'll see if it's true. So there's that. Yeah. 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 Yes. That was so much pressure, A, because I loved the show before I knew we were going to be working on it, because it's such a good show, and I thought Tabitha did a fantastic job. So then when I found out we were, uh, when I found out that we were going to be working on it, I was like, oh my gosh, I love the show, I want to work on it. But at the same time, I was like, I don't want to work on it because everyone's going to hate me because, you know, I mean, I am like everyone else, it's like loyalty to the first actor who got to work on it such as a very poor example, but an example no less, I would have not seen the subsequent Twilight films had Taylor Lautner been replaced because Taylor Lautner was the original. You stick by your choices, that's how I feel. I mean, I didn't see the last Twilight film anyway. But anyway, uh, but I was nervous about that uh, just because I wanted to do right by the show. So I watched Tabitha's version, I watched the Japanese version again, and I would watch probably the Japanese version, uh, at least for a couple minutes before I went in to record, more so, and then in addition to watching the episodes, just because I wanted to make it my own as much as possible. Thanks for coming. Um, I wanted to make it my own as much as possible um, with still being true to what Tabitha did, because that's why so many people love the show in the first place. That's why I love the show. So it was a lot of pressure. Um, but they premiered it in Canada, and apparently the Canadian fans really enjoyed it, and that was what they were. I was like, Funimation, that was pretty ballsy of you. Like they could have, they could have like attacked you, which they didn't. So that was good. So I tried.